Hi everyone and welcome to Webinar Wednesday. I'm your host Jessica King and I just wanted to quickly thank you all for joining us today. Nobody wants an injury to slow them down when they're training for a 5k or just doing your everyday workouts. There are so many easy tips and techniques that you can do to ensure your body and muscles are in top working condition. Today's speaker, orthopedic sports medicine specialist Dr. Christina Walker will give you a breakdown on how to prepare during before, during, and after a workout to make sure your body and muscles stay healthy. Here's a little more info on today's speaker. Dr. Walker is board certified by the American Board of Family Medicine and the American Board of Family Medicine Sports Medicine. Her clinical interests include general athletic injuries, fracture care, and concussions. She joined Kelsey Siebold in January of 2010, and she practices at four of the Kelsey Siebold locations, Main Campus, Downtown at the Shops, Kingwood, and Myerland Plaza. Don't forget, we'll be taking any questions you have at the end of the webinar. If one happens to pop up, just type it into your question box and we'll be do our best to address it at the end of Dr. Walker's presentation. Now I'll hand it over to you, Dr. Walker. Okay, so today we're going to talk a little bit about common injuries as well as things that we can do to prevent those injuries. So. Um, one thing you may wonder is what are the most common things that we tend to see for folks that tend to do a lot of activity on the weekend or after work, basically those who are not professional athletes. So <clears throat> the first one is we tend to see a lot of ankle sprains. An ankle sprain is a ligament injury. It usually occurs when you twist the ankle and the ligament gets stretched. More severe injuries, the ligament can actually tear. Symptoms of that are usually swelling, you may get bruising, difficulty bearing weight, um, and mild sprains can resolve in about a week. More severe sprains can take four to six weeks to resolve. The second thing is a groin pull. Um, in the groin, there are lots of muscles in there that help you do the things you need to do when you're doing activities. And a lot of times you can get a stretch injury or even a tear of these muscles. The degree of the injury is going to dictate how long it takes to heal, and this is definitely something we tend to see, especially with sudden movements or sudden, sudden sprinting. The third injury is similar to that. It's a hamstring strain, which is a muscle injury to the um, big group of muscles in the back of the thigh. We do tend to see these a lot with sudden uh, movements, sprinting when you're not warmed up, um, lots of different activities like that. These can range from mild strains that take a week or two to resolve to complete ruptures that may even need surgery. Most of the time they don't and they can be healed with proper rest and rehab. Shin splints are very common, especially in runners. Um, basically, it's pain in the front of both of your legs. It tends to happen from overuse. We can see it when there's a sudden change in your training routine, the surface that you train on. Sometimes if you change your shoes or do different things, you can start to get them. Um, and that's an injury we see. <clears throat> if shin splints aren't treated at the right time, they can progress to stress injuries and even stress fractures. We see all kind of knee injuries in um, our weekend warriors. One of the biggest one that people worry about is an ACL tear. The reason for that is the recovery from the treatment of this is pretty long. It's about six months most of the time. There is a wonderful surgery to treat it, but it's an injury that we would all like to avoid. The ACL is a ligament in the knee that helps with stability. It keeps your lower leg from sliding forward on your upper leg and it gives you stability when you try to twist and pivot. So a tear in this ligament gives you some significant limitations until it's healed or repaired. Another thing that we tend to see a lot is more of an overuse injury, patellofemoral syndrome, it's also called runner's knee. It's from a lot of irritation from repetitive um, high impact movements on that kneecap joint. Um, and it can give a lot of pain in the knee and cause a big problem for a lot of runners. Another injury we tend to see is tennis elbow. This is another overuse or stress injury of the tendons in the wrist, or the tendons actually that allow you to extend your wrist and fingers, they actually start up in the elbow. So while you feel the pain in the elbow, the tendons actually move the muscles that affect the wrist and finger. So that can take quite a while to get better sometimes. Just an overview of some of the more common injuries we see. We certainly see more than this, but these are some of the things we tend to see a lot in the office. So one of the things that you can do to try to 
prevent yourself from getting injured is to wear the proper protection. So it's important to know the sport that you're playing or doing um, and the type of things that can happen. So with certain sports, you want to make sure you have the proper equipment. For example, if you're going to play hockey, you want to make sure that you're protecting yourself. If you're playing soccer, you want to make sure that you're protecting your shins and other areas. So depending on the sport, you're going to want to protect the certain areas that tend to get injured. So you want to pay particular attention to the neck, the shoulder, elbows, chest, especially knee and shin. Um, also, don't forget um, the neck up. So sometimes you'll need mouthpieces if you're going to play rugby or even sometimes basketball, your helmets and face guards, things like that to protect everything, especially if you're in a contact sport. So stretching is very important. You definitely want to make sure that you're stretching and warming up. A lot of the injuries that we talked about earlier can be prevented with proper stretching. So you definitely want to make sure that you warm your muscles up a little bit. You don't want to stretch cold muscles too much, so you want to do some sort of a little bit of a warm-up and then some gentle stretches of the major muscle groups that you're going to be using during your exercise. So <clears throat> a few minutes before you know you're going to exercise, preferably at least 10, you want to do some low light um, warming up and then definitely stretch those major muscles that you know you're going to be using so hopefully you don't get injuries. So <clears throat> we're going to talk a little bit about avoiding certain injuries. Injuries can't always be avoided, but sometimes there are things that we can do to keep you from getting some of the more common injuries. We're going to focus on the ACL because there's been a lot of research on that um, and a lot of programs that have actually been shown to cut down on the rate of ACL injury. So the study started because research showed that a lot of female athletes were getting ACL tears more so than their male counterparts. They did an evaluation of their mechanics and they realized that the way that they were landing um, was affecting their knee and causing more strain on the ACL. This put them at higher risk to tear their ACL. So what they then did was they did an entire program to retrain the way that they land. So, and they also worked on their flexibility. So <clears throat> to avoid the injuries, you definitely want to work on the strength in your lower legs and your flexibility, not just in the obvious muscles like your quads and hamstrings, but also the muscles in your hip and your calf muscles. You definitely want to strengthen all of those muscles that support the knee. This helps you land in a better fashion um, that will put less strain on your ACL when you're playing sports and hopefully cut down on the incidence of injuries. Also, certain sports that require you to do a lot of cutting or pivoting, you want to practice that and get really good at doing that in a way that you don't put so much stress on your All right, sorry, we're having a little te technical difficulty, but we're back now. So another thing we're going to talk about is um, hydration. So no matter what activity you're doing, you want to make sure that you're protecting yourself in other ways. So hydration is very important, especially if you're doing an endurance sport or if you're exercising in the heat. Um, if you're doing an endurance sport, you want to make sure that your hydration includes some electrolyte re replacement, not just water. So if you're training for a marathon and you want to do that, make sure you're not just drinking water, something that has some electrolyte replacement, because otherwise your sodium levels can get so low, you can get into some big troubles with exercise. Obviously, if you're going to be exercising outside in the sun, you want to make sure, just like with any other time, that you're protecting your skin with an SPF um, of at least 30, and you want to try to do something that will stay on with sweat or water. And again, just a, another thing, you want to make sure that you have the proper safety equipment for your particular sport to protect the areas that are most vulnerable. One thing you want to do, too, that can cut down on injuries is you want to keep a consistent and balanced routine. Typically, the body does not like any sudden changes. So a lot of times we see 
overuse injuries, new injuries, when training is either suddenly increased or changed. So if you can keep your body primed for activity, that's the best way to prevent injury. If you know you're wanting to start something new, start off very slow and gradually, and hopefully that'll cut down on some of these injuries that are not only painful but very frustrating. So again, we're going to talk about warming up. So a lot of the injuries that we mentioned at the beginning were due or can be prevented by proper warm-up. And this is an area that is often neglected, um, especially in our weekend warriors. So um, warming up allows the muscles to stretch more gently and slowly. You definitely want to do a little bit of warming up to get your muscles nice and warm, and then you want to stretch some. A trainer sometimes can help you put up, uh, put together a good routine or a coach if you're playing a more organized sport, um, but you definitely want something that is going to warm up the major muscles that you're going to be using with your particular sport activity and make sure you're doing a good stretch before. Stretching after is also very important, but a lot of times the warm up is often neglected. So this is one of the most important points that we can tell you is you need to pay attention to what your body is trying to tell you. For some reason, our society has um, really gotten into the no pain, no gain mantra, but honestly, I'd like to tell patients pain is your body's check engine light. So if you're driving your car and your check engine light comes on, you know you need to stop and do something or something bad's going to happen. Pain is exactly the same thing for your body. When you're experiencing pain, usually that means we need to do something different or something bad's going to happen like an injury, either an overuse injury or an acute injury like a tear or a fracture. So when you start to feel pain and soreness, it's um, important that you uh, make some changes to what you're doing. Otherwise, you're going to get some problems with that. If you feel certainly a sharp or stabbing pain, you definitely want to stop. If you feel like something bad is going to happen, it probably is, and you should stop. And you should wait until these symptoms resolve before returning activity. If these symptoms become worse or persistent, you definitely want to see your healthcare provider to make sure that things are thoroughly evaluated and treated. So, one other thing that can help prevent some of these overuse injuries is following the 10% rule. So we mentioned earlier that the body doesn't like sudden changes and you can often get injuries from that. So if you limit yourself to increasing your activity or intensity by no more than 10% at a time, it can really cut down on the injuries that you're getting. For example, if you're running and you're training for a marathon, you don't want to go out one day and do five miles and then two days later do 10 miles. You want to make it much slower than that to get your body used to it. Another important thing that's often neglected is you have to get your rest. So that not only means, you know, obviously sleep to let your body recover, but it also means allowing your muscles to rest as well. If you're doing weight training, you definitely want to give yourself days off between major muscle groups. So for example, if you're going to do upper body one day, the next day you may want to do lower body or abs um, and same thing goes with cardio. If you're doing different types of cardio exercise, you want to make sure that you're not doing a ton of hard running when you're going to be doing your leg day. You want to mix it up so that your body can rest. So your muscles and tendons need to rest as well as your overall body. So make sure you're getting plenty of sleep in addition to the hydration we talked about earlier and make sure you're staggering your workout so your muscles can recover as well. So sore muscles. So a lot of people will get this, especially when you're starting a new routine or if you've increased your intensity or duration of your training. A lot of times it'll be a delayed onset. You may not notice it while you're exercising, but later or even the next day or so, we all have that soreness that you experience. 
it comes from the stress that you're putting on on your muscles and then the adaptations your body's trying to make to exercise. It's just real important to listen to that. Sometimes some gentle exercise with muscle soreness is good. If that pain persists or you get sharp pain, that can be a sign of an injury versus the standard soreness we can see from exercise. So just pay attention to that. Make sure your muscles are getting plenty of rest and your body is getting plenty of rest. So what are some remedies that we can do for muscle soreness? So we already mentioned rest. Ice can help a lot as well. Anti-inflammatory medications can help with the discomfort and help things resolve. Depending on the muscle soreness that you're getting, you can do massage. Not everyone can always go and get a massage. So one thing that you can use is a foam roller to do your own um, deep tissue massage. It works pretty well for the legs, um, hip, and buttock area. Certain muscles respond well to heat as well, especially if you're noticing some muscle spasms. The heat can really help with that. And of course, gentle stretching is always good for muscle soreness. All right, so that concludes our program. We will open up for any questions. And I actually have one to start us <laughs> off. Um, I read some articles where it says that you should put ice on an injury instead of heat. Is that true or why should you do that? That's definitely true, especially right after an injury within the first week or so. You definitely want to do ice instead of heat. Heat can dilate your blood vessels. It increase inflammation and swelling. It can also increase pain. So the vast majority of time you want to do ice for an injury. The only probably exception to that is if you get muscle spasm in your back from lifting, that particular injury can respond to heat. But the vast majority of other injuries, um, definitely ice. Um, we have a question here. What exercises are good to prevent pulled hamstrings and Achilles tendons? So one of the most important um, exercises is actually a warm-up. So most of the time those muscles get pulled when they're cold and then you do a sudden um, sprint or a quick movement. So the warm-up is going to be very vital. You want to make sure that you're doing that. Some light jogging, um, some high knees and gentle stretches um, can help with those two things. Um. What's the difference between a strain and a sprain? So a sprain usually occurs to a ligament and a strain usually happens to muscles and tendons. It, it basically means the same type of process, it's just the different tissue it occurs to. It's almost like a stretching or tension injury that starts with stretching and then progresses to tearing. So mild instances are stretches and major incidents are actual tearing. So usually when it's a ligament, people will refer to it as a sprain. If it's a muscle or tendon, they'll refer to it as a strain. Okay. Um, I have a question. Somebody emailed me earlier today and was asking about sudden running activities. Like He was trying to run for first base at a softball game, and he wanted to know if there were any specific stretches for older people to do before engaging in activity. So I would say the most important thing there is not necessarily just the stretch, but you have to be thoroughly warm. And that includes not only stretching, but you want to get your muscles warm. If your muscles are cold and you sprint, that's always a setup to have an injury. So you have to be thoroughly warm, whatever you have to do, whether it's running, like running, jogging, a bike to get your muscles good and warm. And then you want to stretch all of your major muscle groups. Okay. Um, so I know it's... Um the school year has just started. What's the best way for kids to stay hydrated while they're practicing? So the best thing is to give them the opportunity, first of all, to get their breaks. Um, I would allow young athletes to drink as much as they want. Um, if they get sick from drinking too much, that, that's okay. You want to give them plenty of uh, breaks. You definitely want to provide a couple of different um, hydration alternatives, water, and then something with an electrolyte replacement, like a Gatorade or Powerade or something else. Um, is there a time frame from when you're injured to when you can get back to doing physical activity? So there is a frame, but I don't necessarily give it a number of days. It literally all depends on how you're feeling. So the rule of thumb is you want to wait until you're completely pain-free, and then you want to stay consistently pain-free. 
and then you can begin a slow and gradual return. The reason I don't give it days is because for some people in some injuries, it may take three days to get to that point, and for other times it may take weeks. So instead of thinking about it in terms of days, you wanna think about it in terms of your pain. So once your pain is consistently gone, then you can return your activity slowly and gradually. Okay, um, and I think we have time for one last question. Do you know or have any recommendations on what the best treatment for a pulled back muscle is? So the first thing you wanna do is rest from the activity. Anti-inflammatories can help with the pain. Ice can help. If you're feeling muscle spasms and tightness in there, you can use a little bit of heat. Gentle stretching. And if you're finding that these things aren't improving, then I would definitely get in to see your um, physician so that we can, one, see if there's other major injuries, or two, give you the proper um, other tools to help you recover. Okay. Um, I understand we were having some sound issues, so I'm sorry about that. Hopefully everyone got all of the info that they needed, though. And you just received a quick breakdown on what to do before, during, and after exercising to help keep your body and muscles in the best condition. Um, so this concludes our webinar, and I just want to say a big thank you to you, Dr. Walker, for helping us out and doing such a great job, and also for all of you for joining us this month. Don't forget to tune into our October presentation, 10 Ways to Reduce Your Risk of Breast Cancer by Dr. Aswaran. And also don't forget to follow us on social media and join in on the conversation. This weekend is Labor Day weekend, so I hope everyone has a fun and safe holiday. And thanks again for listening to us today. We'll talk to you all next month.